Okay, I'm back. Hello. Yellow. Cool. So. Bring this down here a little bit. So, what do we have to do in order to get this? Make my notes. To 20, probably 23 pages, we'll say. We're at 19, so that means we gotta add four pages. So where can we add four pages? Well, we can add a page here. Um, two pages here, actually. Where? Or one page there, actually, yeah. Because what we want to do is we want to actually make this the two page split. Make that kitchen really horrific. Go exploring. Twenty and twenty one. All right. So twenty one is pretty good, but let's just double check something real quick here. Twenty two pages is the average. We're at twenty one. Twenty one. Oh, you know what? Yeah. We'll do this as a double page actually. We'll do this as twenty one. 20 slash 21, we'll do this as 22. Cool. Thanks, that'll work. That's what I want. So standard 22 pages. Perfect. page 
change the day. This would be issue one. Uh, temp title. That works for me. I'll do a few bits here. <coughs> Excuse me. Already got this formatted better. should not be a double page. All right. That was silly. I'll let you know what happens, Ronnie. <laughs> you don't have to keep asking every week. <laughs> apparently apparently wandering minds want to know
Okay. So it's two fifteen. Well, two fifteen to be precise. And I would like to know what you viewers would like to see. Would you like to see me lay out uh, a second issue? Would you like to see me uh, start drafting this a bit? What would you like? I'm willing to work on this. In fact, if you wanted to see me do something else, I could do that too. But I will continue working on this project on screen. For better or for worse, Exciting. Thanks, Johnny. I'm excited. For B row, I see how it is. I see how it is. Something about the viewers I need, not the viewers I deserve. <laughs> Something.
<clears throat> Alright. So, what would be exciting then? <laughs> Wouldn't I be the Gotham of Twitch streamers and you guys would be Batman? I'm confused. Yeah, just gonna just gonna go fight a zebra. It's gonna happen. I am good. I will not attempt to speak French. My accent is atrocious, but I do basically understand it. That being said, uh, this is an English stream, so, you know, try your best to speak in English. think uh, all right we should put these two scenes together because this one is scene one scene two three 
three. And there'd be a third issue. And the third issue would be four or five, probably. I would think. Well, so I have mixed feelings about, um, I have mixed feelings about, uh, the excitement level, because part of the point of Accidental Origin was that I wanted to show, uh, that sort of grind a little bit. And obviously I want to be engaging and I want to be talking and I want to have you guys ask me questions. So that's important and, and that engagement is important for sure. And I want you guys to be entertained. Like I don't want it to be uh, boring for you. That being said, there there is going to be elements of things that need to get done regardless, right? So there is that. The other thing is, is that I really wanted, when I first started Accident Older, and I really wanted to do the entirety of like this first short story on stream. So as much as I would, like I want to kind of work on all of this off screen, it, it kind of gets weird, right? So, yeah. Uh, zero one up. What comic am I making? I am working on adapting a short story that I started on stream here uh, ages ago into a comic book. Uh, specifically, probably a three to four issue miniseries. Uh, nothing longer than that. So yeah, uh, if you go to my website, uh, which you can see to my right there, or my left, I guess. It'd be right to you guys. Uh, you can check out the VODs and see all of the different uh, stages of working on this project. So there is that. Um, yeah. I'm, um, what else? My thought process is a little weird today. A little scattered. So yeah, that's kind of what I feel about this, where it's, I've kind of tucked myself into a corner, right? Where I can remove the boring elements, but at the same time, it, it, it defeats sort of some of the purpose of what I've been trying to do. So who knows, right? That being said, if you have suggestions for ways that I can make those elements more engaging, please don't hesitate to let me know. I would love feedback, for sure. You guys know how I am. Yes, Sam, this is a reality show on real time.
<laughs> well, I mean, I, I spent most of the stream so far uh, like taking my previously written text and expanding it out into pages and then panels within those pages. Mostly just me mumbling along with my weird thought process and trying to figure things out, as it were. Nice, Sam. Negotiations and then leaving. Seven is okay. <laughs> no, you are correct. I do not answer anyone, including myself. Uh, seven works perfectly. So then you want to do a page flip. Five would probably be more ideal, though. Seven.
Um, I'm not an artist, so I don't draw, uh, per se, though I understand, uh, visually, I understand visually how a comic is constructed, but no, I didn't short storyboard at all. You're literally seeing the process of me turning it into a comic. I'm, I wrote the short story, right? So I'm aware of the pacing and I'm aware of visual indicators, like visual elements within it. So I know kind of what what I want to aim for. So like this text I'm looking at here, this stuff here, this is the original text of the short story. And I'm breaking it up, saying, well, I want a page with this, I want a page with that, I want a page with that. Then saying, well, within those pages, you know, what how do we break up those actions? How do we break up those, those into panels so that we can tell our story? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of that going on. So for example, right now I'm looking at it, it's like, this, this line right here, Hyperanor woke and didn't know where he was. That's a panel. And that will be part of this. Off screen voice, perfect. I hope that helps, Zero. Um, and if you want me to be more specific, I can be. <laughs> yeah, Sam, it is. It's nice that somebody is taking this seriously. I really didn't finish that section, did I? Do I have notes on this? I gotta have notes on this.
that's the first step. Um, writing every day is an important part. It doesn't have to be a lot. It like on days when I'm not feeling like super into writing or whatever, I try and write like a hundred words. It doesn't have to be on anything specific, just you know, put down a hundred words, say you did something. You've exercised your mice your your muscle. I feel like there's a uh, I feel like I'm missing an edit or something. Maybe I'm not. I got one here. Two. Yeah, I'm trying to find a specific thing. Should have dated these drafts so I'd know which ones were which. <laughs> That's what I should have done. Oh, I put them in backwards order. Got it. Gotcha. I need a paper clip here. should have notes on here. Yeah, my notes say definitely missing a section. Need to figure out how their conversation moves from the employer to the backstory. So yeah, there's definitely some pages missing here. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, all of Sam's advice is quite good in my opinion. And I agree, um, working, like starting to stream has been one of the like best parts of working that muscle for me. It's got me really into a good rhythm and a guaranteed time where I'm going to work on something very specific. <laughs> yeah, the terrifying question is pretty senseless. True. Um, so the most important piece of advice uh, for starting a story is you always want to start as close to the end as possible. Well, I guess it depends. If you're writing a short story, you want to start as close to the end as possible. If you're not, then you can start at the beginning. Like in a more novel situation, you're starting at the beginning. But the idea is, is that you want to start with something happening. You want to start in action, in medias res. Your character is going to be in a situation. Something's happening. You're there. You're doing it. You 
you want to introduce your re your readers to what's going on and who's doing it as soon as possible. I like that start, Sam. That's for your new one, right? Which is about the bridge. So he's literally like, here's the bridge. What's your next sentence, Sam? Perfect. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, you're introducing, you're like, we're at this bridge. Here's the thing that happens on the bridge. We're in the story. Like, you're there. I think that makes perfect sense. And that's, Fear the Siren is kind of like that. Uh, I've started as close to the end as possible. I'm starting basically right at the main confrontation, like the climax sort of of the story. Uh, or close to it. I'm starting with a little less action but it immediately devolves into action. I'm establishing that a character is doing something, they're watching this place, and then they go and infiltrate it. And then a fight happens, and like we're, we're there. We're knowing who these characters are. The first sentence of Fear the Siren is... Uh, where is it here? Hyperanor scan the ruins of the house, wary of any signs of life inside the valley. He's watching the house. We know who the character is, what he's doing, and we see we start to see that there's a purpose to what he's doing. You know? There's, there's concerns. He's wary of things. There's stuff he's looking out for. The next sentence I instantly start talking about, um, you know, he wished he didn't have to block his ears with wax and how dangerous that situation is, but why he has to do it, you know? Um, I also vote actions. I am not super great with description and that kind of thing. I am getting a lot better at it. I think a character's actions are more, are effective tools of characterization. What your character does is just as important as what your character says and looks are important, but they're not necessarily the be all to end all. Um, what you should do is if you want to describe a character, you should add those details in where they're relevant, you know, like build it throughout the story. That's okay, Mick. No problem. Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying there. Like, Yeah, exactly, right? 
And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Where that kind of description is, is really like, it's like listing. It's, it's the old adage of telling, not showing. You want to show, not tell. Those details kind of come out over time. You know, you'd start off saying, Tom, you'd, you'd have him doing something, and then we'd find out that he lives in Alaska, and we'd find out that he's 21, and he'd find out that he lives with his mom, probably because he'd have a conversation with her, or, or he goes home and something happens with his mother, or something like that. We'd, we'd get those details later. But you don't really start being like, blah. So yeah. That makes sense for issue number three. No problem, Zero. That's what we're here for. Be the last page. I think this is what we go here. So when are you gonna learn to do it? I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe one day. I'm super interested in learning. Uh, but that being said, it's hard to find uh, time to spend to do that kind of thing.
Oh no, I messed up. This would be surrendering. This would be ambush. And if I'm doing this correct, then it would be 22, 21, uh, 20. And this would be. Uh, this would be I seen Ghost in the Shell? Yes. Yes, I have. Well, I mean, The Matrix is based on a lot of different movies, actually. Um, primarily being based on uh, Dark City, for one, and also a, um, a lesser-known Bruce Campbell film, uh, whose name I can never, ever remember. Uh, 
called um, yeah, called a uh, mind warp what it's called releases brain slasher outside the US <laughs> That's all right, Johnny. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I think there will have to be a Issue number four. Because it doesn't really work as an ending. Ooh. Um. Dialogue's really tricky. I don't know if I'm particularly that great at it. The one thing I will say is that if you can make it so that you can tell who a character is just by the things that they say, then you're doing a good job. Yeah, that's fair, Meg. Um, I like some of that stuff too. I don't need it all the time, though. Depends what you're into. I don't like writing stories with a lot of philosophy, though. It's not something that particularly attracts me. But yeah. Um, well, it's 10 after three. So that's probably going to be it for me for today, gang. I got a lot done. I got a lot done. So I think next time, next week, if I don't have another better plan, <laughs> we'll see what the week holds. I will work on 
drafting the first issue of the new Creator of the Siren miniseries. I think that would be the best. Yes. Yeah, that, that's what I want to do. If I come up with something a little more interesting for like a one-off, I will uh, do that. So you guys aren't always dealing with Fear of the Siren. But I like the new direction of it. I feel like it fits really well. That first issue is particularly strong. I think the second and third issues will have to be a little bit uh, tweaked to be better. And we still have to come up with a solid ending. Uh, and yeah, this is a Batman shirt. It's a Japanese Batman shirt. bought it in Europe when I was there so yeah um, that's uh, about it as always uh, you can contact me on Twitter or there's contact links on my website accidentalorigin.com as well as VODs and interesting links for every episode um, Stuff expanded on. I found a bunch of cool uh, articles on ad adapting uh, things, in, uh, adapting like prose into into comics. So I'm going to be posting those links today. So yeah, um, check me out. <laughs> check it out. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Questions were good. Uh, we got a lot done. It's great to have a productive episode where you know you're accomplishing things. Um, it feels nice. So yeah, without further ado, my name is Brendan, this is Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show, catch you all later guys.